Hi students, I hope you are fine. Today I would just like to have a look at OneNote. Now this OneNote will just be the basic format of OneNote. We can, um, before we start, we just have to note the software that we are using. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search here for OneNote. And I just want to show you over here we've got OneNote, the app, and here we've got OneNote for Windows 10. Now there's a difference between the two. When I go to OneNote for Windows 10, I'm going to show you that here in the ribbon, when I click on Insert, you'll see I just have a limited amount of um, functions that I can apply. Go to Draw, View, home you see a limited amount of functions but when i go to onenote i already have it open here onenote the app do you see when i go to home you have a large range of options to choose from it nearly looks like your microsoft word excel it looks like um, those type of options that you have not the same but you can see the layout it's more full a lot of information you can choose from now another thing I would like to show you is I know students sometimes feel uncomfortable if it does not look the same um, the screen looks a bit different so here you see I've got um, I've got my notebooks displaying here on my left hand side now this is like a little bookshelf. You will see I've got um, a OneNote or a notebook for MS Word, a notebook for Excel. And when I explained my OneNote, when we completed our explanation, we did a question paper together, the one that was written in uh, semester one for June 2022. So we did this um, question and I have this question also over here. So it's like a, a, a book that you draw. When I click on MS Word, do you see now it opens my notebook? I see my sections and I can see my pages over here. Same if I go to Excel. When I click on Excel, it's like pulling out the book for Excel. And now I can also see my sections and my pages. So whichever section I choose, I will then find the pages and I can select from my pages over here to get my information. Now let's say this question, I finished it, I do not want to see it anymore. What you do is you just right click on the question and you can just say close this notebook. So when I click close this notebook, you see it disappear. Now another thing I would like to show you is I know some of you don't like to see this information over here. When I click on this little unpin option, when I click on it, now I can either go create a new one or I can just click on my drop down arrow. If I click on MS Word, I'll be able to see MS Word. If I click on Excel, I'll be able to see Excel. However you prefer. If you like to see, your notebooks to the side all you do is you go back to your pin and when i click on it you see now i see my information again now what i did is i created a little activity for you just to go through the basic operations of OneNote. here it tells us create a new blank notebook now create means it's something that's not existing we have to create it we have to to make it a, we have to create it now it's what the word says so create a new it basically it's the same thing that it's telling you okay so we are going to create a new blank notebook so what i'm going to do is i'm going back to OneNote to create something new i go to file and i go to new because I cannot open it if it's not created yet. So I go to New. Then it's important to go to Browse. I select Browse. And here I select Browse again. Now what I'm going to do here 
is I'm going to show the computer where do I want my notebook to be saved. Now, it will directly take you to OneNote. It's okay if you, you save over here, but um, I recommend my students to go save inside their folder. So rather, please go to Documents, where you save your work. Go look for your folder. I'm going to say N6CP. Now, this is not just for N6CP. You can also uh, do this in your N5 um, computer practice for OneNote. But I'm just using this as an N6 activity. But you, it's basically the same. You can, you can also benefit from, from this activity if you are N5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my N6 folder. Here it asks me, what is your notebook name? Now make sure that you key in as per instruction. Now what I did with this activity, I based it on the question paper that was written in the first semester of 2022, 2022. So what it instructs me, and this is important because we're not going to have a header or a footer. So this is very important. You have to key in question one and then your name and surname. Don't just put the word name, surname. Okay, you have to include your name and surname. So what you do is you will say in capital letters, you will type in question one, space one, and your name and surname. Okay, and then you will say create. And what you will notice now is you will see that over here it says question one and my initials and surname. Now, if it was an exam, you would have keyed in your examination number, but this is just an activity. Now, what you can do, you see mine is down here. I can click on it and I can just move it. Okay, now I don't want to move. Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't want to. Okay, let me see if I click on Excel. Going to try moving this again so i'm just going to move it here to the top no i don't want to okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to unpin this one and then i can only see question one s one pool now if you saw anything else you would just go let's say you saw ms word then you would just go here and you would select question one s swan pool for example now, this information, this is going to be like your header when you are printing the last part of this question. So, it's very important that you follow your instructions exactly as given. Now, let's go back to our question. It tells us now, number two, insert the following sections. Section one, laptops. Section two, smartphone and section three, tablet. Now, it can be that the word section one will be left out. But because you see this, it tells me, insert the following sections, and it tells me after this colon, this is what you have to insert. So it means in this situation, you have to type the word section one. If it only said laptops, then you would only type laptops. But because it includes the word section one, you have to say section one, laptops, section two, smartphone, and so forth. So let's see. For you to be able to key in your sections, you must know what is my sections. Where do I get it? Here on top, you will see new section. You see a plus sign. Now, you need to use the one that you already have. You will see you already have a new section option. You already have a page option. Let's use this one. I'm going to right click on it and say rename or you can just double click on it and this will also open up the space so you can type so it said section section one one and it said laptops let me just make sure yes laptops so let's say section one laptops now we want our next section. So we go and look. It says section two, smartphone. So let's go to our new tab now to get a new 
section, I just click on the plus sign. You see that section one is now permanent. Now I type in section two. Two, and I've got, oh, my memory is too short. Smartphone, smartphone. So I type in smartphone. And then the last one, I'm going to click on new section. And I'm going to say section three. Um, and I think it's tablet. Tablet, yes. So I'm going to, oh, let me just continue typing it in. Section three, tablet. Okay. So now, you see I've got my three sections. When I click on section one, you see it's blue. When I click on it, you see everything turns blue. It means this pages over here will form part of section one laptops. When I click on section two, which is pink, you will see everything turns pink, meaning this will also be part of section two. And section three turns purple. Everything here turns purple, meaning this will be part of section three. Now let's go and look what is the next instruction. And it tells us over here at number three, insert the following pages. Now you can't just insert pages anywhere. Make sure you check where must I insert my pages. And it tells me I must insert the pages under section one, laptops. That means I must now go to section one, laptops. Okay, and then underneath section one, laptops, I have to now add my pages. Now, I already have an untitled page and you must give this page now a title you can do it by renaming it or as soon as you key in the title it will also appear here so let's see my first page okay must be processing so when i key in the word processing it's processing do you see now it turns to processing over here as well so this is my first page. Then my next page must be range. So what I do, underneath my section one laptops, I go and I say add page. This now puts in a next page. And here I can just type in the word range. And now let's check the last one. It tells me storage. I just go back and I add a page and I can just key it in over here, give a title to this page. And now you will see for laptop, uh, for section one laptops, I have three pages. I've got processing when I click on it. I've got range and I've got storage. When I go to section two, you will see there's an untitled page. I didn't give it a page name as well as same for section three. No pages there. So let's go back to section one laptops and let's see if there's other instructions. Number four tells us insert the following sub page for the storage page. Now this is like when you have a folder and a subfolder. So you need a folder to create a subfolder. It's a folder inside a folder and this is the same thing. It's a page inside a page. So they want you to insert a sub page for the storage page and the name must be RAM. Now what you're going to do is because it's for storage, I'm just going to stay here for storage. I'm going to say add page. I'm going to key in the word RAM and now I'm going to ask myself, do I want RAM to be a page or a sub page and I remember the question instructed me to make it a sub page all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on RAM and you see here I've got the option make sub page now there is different options I'm just going to run with this option for now let's continue now it tells me 5.1 go to your sub page RAM and insert the picture saved as OneNote pic from your computer practice folder. 
tab to insert the picture, saved as OneNote pic from your computer practice folder. So all you're going to do, you have to click now inside your document. Um, I know when I click here, then it's sometimes a bit low. So I just press my up arrow one time because I don't want big gaps between my activity, um, the things I have to insert and key in and so forth. So I try to start as close as possible. Please do not change anything at your date and time unless instructed to. So I click over here. What do I want to do? I want to insert. What do I want to insert? I want to insert a picture. So I go to pictures. Now what it will do is it will take me directly to, okay, this time it takes me to my N6 uh, folder, which is actually where I want to go to. But normally it will take you to pictures. If it says pictures here on top, all you do is you will select documents, you will go to your folder, and then just choose the doc the picture you want. See, I want this one saying OneNote pick. I'm going to click on it. I select it and I say insert. And it will insert by itself. This block, don't worry about it. This is my container. So you just continue typing inside of it. Now, um, normally how I explain it to students is just to keep small spaces open like in Microsoft Word if I would key in something I would enter two times mostly so this is what I want to do here as well so I'm going to enter two times one two times and now I'm going to go back to my activity here tells me insert the heading for IR and mark as critical so what I do I'm going to key in the word for IR and you see they keyed it in in capital letters, so we do the same. And they say mark as critical. This means I want to put a tag to it. Now, we always go home. If you're somewhere, you are lost, you don't know where to go, you see now I'm lost, I don't know what to do, just go home. And when I'm home, here I've got tags. You've got different types of tags you can choose from. And the one we are looking for is critical now when I clicked before I clicked you see I only saw these few options now all you do is you click here for more options and then you will see here's the word critical as they ask you see here they ask you insert the heading for IR and mark as critical so I want to mark my for IR as critical so I highlight it I go to more and I select critical. Do you see this little exclamation mark? This is how we can see that you have marked it as critical. If you were uh, asked, for example, to put in important, it would have inserted a star. Okay, I'm just going to undo. I don't want the star. Okay. Now, my instruction tells me enter two times. So let's first do that before we forget. Oops, let's go here. Enter two times, one, two times. And then it tells me, go to your computer practice draft folder. Okay, it's actually just computer practice folder. Open the file saved as wiki for IR. Copy the last paragraph. So you see, not everything. You copy the last paragraph and paste the paragraph underneath your picture. So what is important is you have to open it. See, it says open. And now I'm going to go to my folder, my yellow folder. If you don't see your yellow folder yet, you can just go to start and go. Most of the time you will see, yes, your um, folder that you can choose from. You can choose it on top. Or you can even say Windows E, the Windows E um, icon. And then from here, you can also go to Documents and go choose from, from here. You know, you are in 6 now, so you know how to open it. So let's go open our file. Uh, file. Let me first go to my folder. Go to my file. There it is. Wiki for IR. I open it. Now it asked me 
to copy the last paragraph. So I'm going to go down to the last paragraph. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to copy. Please don't choose cut because you might have to use this file later on and then by accident you could have cut something. You Now you lose it and it's then just a big story. Just say copy. I close it and I go to my position and I just paste it and this is all you do. Okay, make sure that you open you open this document, don't say right click copy, you open the document, select whatever they've instructed you, highlight it, and then you copy it, you close it, you go to the place you need to insert it, and you paste it. Now it tells me 5.3, oh, and here it tells me make use of the pen mode and draw your name and surname. Make use of a two millimeter black pen. Now our children will be laughing at us when they see how we draw our names and surnames. So what I do is I'm just going to, you see my space again, it's not too large. I'm going to go to draw. Now I want to draw, they told me to use a black pen of two millimeters. So what I have to do is, I'm not sure now, what is my millimeter? You can point to it and you see, oh, 0 0.5. I don't want this one. So what do I do? Just go to color and thickness. Make sure that you've got black because most of us do not have color printers. And then you can just go and view which one. See 1,5 and here's 2. I click on it. I say, okay. And then you're going to write your name and surname. Oh, this is going to be very embarrassing is Swanapu. Now it does not need to be beautiful as long as we can see what you have keyed in. Um, in your external exam if they ask this uh, question most probably they will ask you to do your uh, maybe write question six or question seven or whatever the question number is uh, or they can ask to, to write your ID number or a heading, I don't know. Just follow the instructions. So I'm going to try. Not going to type my whole name because that will take too long. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um as long as we can read it and there it is so i go back to microsoft word and let's see now they tell me to print this page in portrait orientation now remember this ram this is a page okay it's a sub page but it's a page oh do you see i still have this little dot thingy you can just go and click on type again now it's back to my mouse. Okay, so I want to print this page. You just say file. You say print. And I like to say print preview. And have a look at it. Let's just see. Now do you see all my work fits on one page? Because I didn't leave a lot of spaces. If you left big spaces, there could be a chance that your work will fall off your page. So just make sure just to make the spaces so that there's enough space um, and uh, the spaces is not too big and then make your work fall over to a next page. Okay. Now, if they should ask you to change to landscape, you can do it over here, um, but you only change if they tell you to. There's no instruction to uh, change to landscape, so I'm leaving it as portrait. Now, what do we mark over here? Over here, you will get your marks for the name, RAM, okay? You will get your marks for inserting your picture, for keying in for IR, for marking it critical. You will also get your marks for copying the last paragraph and pasting it, and it's the correct text, and then for writing your name and surname, um, and the fact that it's the thickness of your pen and the color black.
So this is what your marks will be for. Okay, so you just click on print and it will then return back to this screen. But uh, we are not done yet. We still have one more question. It tells me here, uh, make a screen print. I like the word print screen actually, but screen print with any method you are familiar with and print in landscape orientation. So here, question seven is landscape, question six, portrait. Now it tells you, ins ensure you display the notebook name, sections, pages and the contents of the sub page RAM. So what they are asking you is they want you to make a print screen of this page that's right in front of you. They want to be able to see question one, your name and surname. They want to see your three sections. They want to see your pages and you have to display RAM, the sub page RAM. You see this instruction tells you and the contents that means what is inside of RAM, the contents of it. I want to see the subpage RAM. Now, all you do is you just go and you make a print screen with the method you are familiar with. Now, remember, print screen is like making a, a copy. Now, if you copy, you have to paste. Where do I paste? I paste my copy in Microsoft Word. So, I'm just going to go to Word. MS Word. Okay, so I just go to Microsoft Word and then I open a blank document. Now you can choose. I'm just going to make my screen a bit smaller. I want to show you something. They told me to paste it and print it in landscape. Now look what happens if I first leave it in portrait and I paste it and now I turn to landscape. you see there's a big gap open and now I can still I actually have to go adjust it to make it more readable so now I click here please don't go stretch your poor paper make it too long or too wide go to your corner and then you can just adjust it and make sure it's a bit bigger and it still fits on the page so you can just adjust accordingly okay but if you first let me just let me just do it like this if i first change to landscape and now i go paste it do you see now it immediately inserts my picture to fit the landscape margins you see it's i don't need to go and adjust now now what's going to happen here you can type a header but do you see, I've got my information here. Here I can see this is question one and your name and surname. So you'll get your marks. This is like your header now. And then I'll see there's your sections. I'll check your spelling, your case. You'll get your marks. I'll see here the pages. You'll get your marks for pages. And then I'll see this is a sub page. See my pages is against the left. And then RAM is a little bit indented. So you'll get your mark then and you'll also get a mark for then displaying RAM as instructed, the contents of RAM. But do you notice here, I cannot see all your information and I do not see what you've written with your pen. Now you don't need to worry about that. Remember when you print it here, when you said file and you said print, print preview, remember here I marked your picture, your 4IR, the critical, what you've uh, copied and pasted and what you've written and all of that. I've already marked it in this first printout. So when you give me the print screen, I only mark now for your notebook name. I mark for your sections, your um, pages, your sub page and the content displayed and making use of a print screen. Now people, OneNote is a lovely um, app. Uh, once I started understanding what it is for, it's really so nice to use it. You can even use it for your summaries. Like I say, what I did is I would go and I would make summaries for me, for example, on Excel. So I would say uh, functions, 
conditional formatting or however so whatever i were looking for if i'm looking for pivot tables i would click on pivot tables and i'll see okay here are some extra pages on it or if i were looking for functions i could then see okay here i've got index uh, the if function nested if and so forth and let's say i wanted to go look at um, vlookup i could just click here and it will take me to my VLOOKUP. When I go to the top, you will see, yeah, it gives my explanation of VLOOKUP. So you can make summaries for yourself as well to make it a bit easier for yourself. I must say, I actually really enjoy um, OneNote. So you can make it part of your life and make life easier for you. I hope you ha have a lovely day. I hope you understand um, the difference between sections and pages and I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.